Today's conversation is on flow-based personal magnetism. I'd like to further our explorations into the magic of intuition, flow state, personal magnetism, and the autotelic personality, relating it all together to facilitate ideal relationships in a wide array of relationship contexts and scenarios. Now, I've been having a lot of conversations lately with others about relationships, and a lot of the challenges seem to spawn from a root cause, a lack of purpose. You see, if a person has deep purpose and meaning in their lives, they are deeply engaged with the different things they do each day, which is ideally what they love to do, and they are more likely to operate in these areas from a state of flow. As a result of being this way, many common relationship issues relating to unnecessary approval seeking, validation seeking, lack of self-love and self-acceptance are non-existent because they're not generating those undesirable thoughts and imaginal scenarios in their mind that play out as unnecessary conflict and turmoil in their relationships. They are instead oriented from their vision, operating with deep meaning and purpose each day, and actually thus attracting related experiences in their current relationships or even new relationships to match. And that's the interesting thing about the mind. It tends to reflect what we sow in it in any shape or form. If we sow thoughts of purpose and love in general, as such does it reflect its kind as the relationships in our lives, as James Allen once said. Mind may be likened to a garden which may be intelligently cultivated or allowed to run wild. But whether cultivated or neglected, it must and will bring forth. If no useful seeds are put into it, then an abundance of useless weed seeds will fall therein and will continue to produce their kind. And by run wild in this regard, we're not talking about a healthy open mind. We're talking about not being aware as to what one is accepting as true, that which would not be considered ideal, and as a result, allowing their minds to wander to and identifying with thoughts that sow unnecessary fear, doubt, and uncertainty, which then could show up in their relationships as well. And their relationships reflected because people are also messengers revealing what we believe to be true and revealing our mental states that we predominantly occupy. Now, a person who has purpose, or we could say vision or mission in life, is not calibrated towards unnecessary fear, doubt, and uncertainty, looking for unnecessary approval or seeking validation in this world of appearances, including in relationships. Instead, being oriented from a vision they find it within and harmoniously and mutually relate with others, translating into powerful personal magnetism, drawing those that match this state effortlessly and subconsciously encouraging ideal attributes in others. This is because mental states, so or we could say mental attitudes in relation to oneself and others, impresses itself upon everything and everyone around them. Their appearances, voice, grow to conform alongside perhaps the way they walk, what they say, how they say, when they say, why they say, those attributes all naturally arise as a reflection of that predominant mental state. Moreover, their mental atmosphere becomes so charged with this energy that those who come in contact with them, their relationships, within or even outside of their presence, feel this mental attitude and appear to reflect it. Thus, everything happens automatically and ideally from an ideal mental attitude. And this is what I recommend when it comes to bringing forth ideal relationships, an ideal mental attitude. So now there's this interesting concept called autotelic personality, which I first learned from the book Flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. It is an ideal state of consciousness, 
an ideal way of authentic being, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, where everything happens naturally, automatically, and ideally in harmony with your vision and in relationship with others. An autotelic is a person who is in flow regardless of this world of appearances. They find entertainment wherever they are, and they are whole and complete regardless of having or not having appearances of fame, fortune, external approval, or validation. They find flow in whatever they're doing, or not doing for that matter, like simply being still, as they are perpetually intrinsically rewarded, which translates into powerful, unconditional, personal magnetism, which attracts accordingly in likeness. He says in his book about the autotelic, because such persons experience flow in work, in family life, when interacting with people, when eating, even when alone, with nothing to do, they are less dependent on the external rewards that keep others motivated to go on with a life composed of routines. They are more autonomous and independent because they cannot be easily manipulated with threats or rewards from the outside. At the same time, they are more involved with everything around them because they are fully immersed in the current of life. So we see the relationship here between the autotelic and the magnetic personality. Another thing that happens is when a person is autotelic, because they're not stuck in their head or unnecessarily biased physically, mentally, emotionally, yet harmoniously integrated with all, is their intuition remains at a peak. And with intuition, we know a thing before it happens, where we could choose mindfully whether to proceed or not, rather than allowing ourselves subconsciously to be swayed by the world of appearances. And this is helpful when relating with others. This is being harmoniously calibrated and ties nicely into emotional intelligence as we discussed in a recent video, I'll link in the description to it. So while being in flow state predominantly, you become autotelic, and you find your intuition is crystal clear. For any moment, a choice is presented. And also, by being autotelic, many of these choices, if not all of these choices, in many areas of your life are made automatically. Turning what you observe, think of, emotionally relate to, or touch into gold, hypothetically speaking, yet literally in some regards, such as the way of the alchemist, one with the inner and outer aspects of life, yet not in conflict with each other. So now intuition, William Walker Atkinson does a great job defining it. He says, in the region of the higher planes of the inner consciousness are to be found that wonderful aspect or phase of mind, which we call intuition, where Webster defines as direct apprehension or cognition immediate knowledge, as in perception, or consciousness involving no reasoning process. It is a higher form of that which we know as instinct, the difference being chiefly that instinct belongs to the phenomena of the below conscious planes and has to do chiefly with that which concerns the physical body and well-being, while intuition belongs to the above conscious planes and has to do with the higher part of the nature of the individual. Instincts sends its message up to the intellect, while intuition sends its message down to the intellect. Many of the highest forms of pleasurable things come from the regions of intuition. Art, music, poetry, all these come from above, from the region of intuition. So consciousness is one, and infinitely intelligent. As you silence your mind from mental chatter, you notice this. Ideas hunches and inspirations show up in your mind in relation to your vision, that's intuition. That's because the unseen, infinitely intelligent power of it all dwells within you. Your body and mind are the temple of this animating spirit, the one spirit that is infinitely intelligent and animates all in this world of appearances. This is where all true, unconditional, personal magnetism is sourced from and the world of appearances reflects it because consciousness is one. Simply put, others mirror our state. 
And I would even say that wisdom and love, which I would say are aspects of unconditional personal magnetism, actually make up your natural way of being and that of others. This would explain why I've seen even what one would consider a person deeply identified with lack and limitation-based beliefs transform in the presence of a person with this kind of authentic personal magnetism. That is again because this degree of personal magnetism is symbolic of the animating spirit of all wisdom and all love. And here's where intuition comes in. Since love and wisdom are your natural ways of being, with intuition as you go about your day-to-day initiatives, you are eternally guided from within in relation to the experiences or appearances so you know clearly what to do or not do. You really don't even need to decide a lot of the times as mentioned. It's done ideally for you. And I found that although always there since childhood, it seemingly increased in frequency as I relearned to listen to myself and trust myself beyond seeking approval and validation from this world of appearances. In other words, releasing false beliefs that I identified with for whatever the reason may be along the way. You see, beliefs that manifest as excessive approval seeking and validation in this world of appearances could result in repeating the same patterns or past beliefs, some which became wired into what we call instinct. And there are certain instincts that are still helpful, so we could leave those there. Intuition helps bring to awareness which beliefs are not helpful for our next phase of transformation so we can release them and our relationships mirror accordingly. And if one does not do this, it could appear as stagnation, which is repeating the same cycle over and over again, a mental prison the way I like to see it, which should not be cohesive to a magnetic personality. This is why children are naturally magnetic, because they're not mentally imprisoned by certain beliefs and are naturally poised for transformation. And this is precisely why he says, many of the highest forms of pleasurable things come from the region of intuition. Art, music, poetry, all these come from above, the region of intuition. Intuition thus is our natural way of being, ever evolving and ever realizing. Now, if a person does not believe or denies the existence of intuition, they may find themselves feeling purposefulness, stuck in their head, repeating the same patterns as mentioned as I've been in situations like that before. So I know what it's like. It was because I was at a certain point identified with information that throttled my intuition and denying the very existence of it. Thus, It is important to acknowledge that you are not this little island. You are interconnected with it all. And via your intuition, you call upon everything, which includes insights, hunches, inspirations, to see your visions into existence. Intuition guides me exclusively on my entrepreneurial journey as well as all areas of my life. Simply put, if it doesn't feel right intuitively, I don't get involved. If it feels right intuitively, I'm involved. Which, as mentioned, following the magic path of intuition, it becomes automatic. And I consider this part of the autotelic personality. Because as I remain in a flow state predominantly, I find my intuition is always at a peak. Now let's apply what we discussed today in a practical way in relationships. Specifically in conversations. Yet, use your imagination for the various applications of this and see how powerful this is. This is based on many years of my observation, practice, in a broad array of contexts, consulting, relationships, leadership, and having many thousands of conversations about this topic with others since 2001. To articulate it, I find it fits perfectly in Mihai Csikszentmihalyi's flow process. So let's discuss it from this perspective. First, we have clear goals. Now, this could be as simple and natural as following your intuition feeling out the vibe of a conversation. Or you may have a conversational goal. Maybe you are hiring someone and you want to see if they're a right match for your team. Sometimes we may have a list of criteria. Sometimes we don't. We go by intuition. Sometimes I might do one or another or I may do both. 
And I believe it's also important to leave space to be open to possibility as well. Because they could bring some fresh perspectives or perhaps they have abilities that go beyond the list that we are looking for. Simply put, you can have both your list of criteria and also be open to possibilities. So here's where we set the intention of how we would like it to go. This is why, as mentioned earlier, when you have a definite major purpose or a vision, we can find it easier to calibrate with the interactions. The same is to be said if you're going by intuition or going by vibe. It's really up to you. Then we have immediate reporting and feedback. A lot of this has to do with releasing control. We release control into the flow. This control is apparent in our physical body, emotions, and thoughts. If we simply observe without shame or condemnation, we will notice that this control is released. This is self-awareness. You've heard me say this many times. You are aware and you are aware of. So self-awareness in this context is you are aware of what your thoughts, emotions, and behaviors are revealing. And what we're interested in here is releasing unnecessary control. As we release the control, we allow the power of the subconscious mind to take it from there. Now, it's important in general to make a study of yourself in this area because you'll know what your thoughts, emotions, and behaviors mean to you. For example, if I'm having a conversation with someone and I notice my vocal cords tightening up, it means I feel uncomfortable in the conversation. And from there, I can ask myself, what does this mean? And I know the answer. Back in the days, I wasn't aware of it to this degree. And I would just force myself to keep going totally unaware of this nuance. Then we have harmony between challenge and skill. And so if an interaction is too challenging, and that is subjective when I say too challenging, maybe it's a certain type of interaction or a specific conversation that would be considered very difficult. If the challenge is too high, we might not be in flow yet. This is where we can take it one step at a time by breaking it down. Let's say, for example, it's a conversation where there's a certain outcome that you would like and you're not sure if it is a match for the other person or if they would reciprocate. In your mind, you break it down into small steps, such as starting the conversation, asking them about their day, talking about something that is mutually interesting, and then bringing up the topic after there's a nice rapport established. Then you'll find yourself in flow. And you'll find that the topic will flow a lot more naturally. Also, you get better at it with practice, determining what the small steps are in the interactions so you can step into them accordingly. And you also get better at releasing unnecessary control that may show up as mentioned, which could include trying to put on a certain persona or judging yourself or perfectionism or something like that. Here we're simply allowing ourselves to be the way we are. This is practical self-acceptance. And this will become a habit as well. So now, as the conversations progress, you'll notice that it flows quite naturally and intuitively while you're discussing the key topic, if there be one. And it's going towards an outcome. Let's say, for example, if it's a sales presentation or leadership role. This is where you are now in the flow and practicing being autotelic in relationships. There is a healthy, flexible conversation while keeping within the thread, heading towards the outcome or next step or conflict resolution. You also notice at this point a deeper rapport with the other person. And you're aware of this without overthinking that you are actually quite magnetic in your personality as the other person reciprocates. And again, you get better at this with practice by simply being aware of this in your interactions. You further affirm it to be how you are. This is also where we start to experience the byproducts of flow state, as mentioned in his book. Actions and awareness become one. This is where we see everything flowing naturally and your authentic behavior, as mentioned earlier, voice, body language, and general appearance all naturally arise as a reflection of this inner state of mind, again, happening naturally without trying. And this is why I like to focus more on the metaphysical cause, which for the purpose of our conversation today, is the magnetic mental state rather than the behaviors of what to say, etc. While those aspects can be helpful, let's say you study those areas, 
we could end up becoming overly dogmatic in those areas and trying to force them or fit them into our interactions in an uncalibrated way. So I'd rather allow everything to flow naturally from your magnetic flow state and autotelic being. So if you do read books like, for example, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie or whatever book regarding communication skills, you'll be able to incorporate what is authentic to you as applicable, placing the rest aside. Which, by the way, is true for anything you learn in personal development. One way is not necessarily better than another. We want to keep the content into consideration with the context. And by doing this, you allow that information to inspire you while also bringing forth your own style, which may or may not include those components in the information that you study. And if so, perhaps in part or in whole or in certain combination. Now, as we continue our interactions in this way, we're also aware that thoughts, emotions, and behaviors related to fear and doubt-based beliefs taper away. Also, time distortion may be experienced where the conversation may have been two hours long, yet it felt like 10 or 15 minutes, and you become autotelic which means you feel everything is flowing naturally and automatically. And you may even notice, like I do, that you're not actually thinking about what to say or how to respond. Rather, it seems to happen automatically. That's another major benefit of practicing this. Then as you do, all of this becomes a natural way of being. And you'll find that in conversations, you're not trying to argue or convince. It's nowhere to be in your energy. Rather, you're allowing the conversation to flow and it mirrors in the interaction accordingly, which is your authentic magnetic personality. And also as mentioned in the beginning, having a major purpose or vision for your life, you'll also find that all of this flows more naturally and easier. And for this, I recommend my vision video from the start of the year. I'll link in the description to it. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto suggestion to further encourage. You can say, I am aware of what I think, how I emotionally relate, and how I behave as I am interacting with others to understand what I'm imagining and thus where the interaction is going to a heightened degree each day as I realize that via my intuition, I always know what I want and how to get there as others show up automatically from this magnetic state of mind in a mutually harmonious way, benefit for me, benefit for them, benefit for divine and evolution. As I continue living this way, I am further aware that this is my natural way of being, which is autotelic, from which everything happens automatically and naturally, all choices appearing to be made for me ideally and automatically representing flow-based personal magnetism on my blissful journey to realizing my visions, my natural divine path of least resistance. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.